Recording. All right. Hey, everybody. TJ, how was, uh, TJ, how was uh, distance learning today, my man? Thumbs down. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was going to ask you about that. Terrible. <laughs> worst thing in our country right now. It's the worst. It's, the, it's, the, it's killing the kids. It's killing the adults. It's killing everybody. I mean, we're getting paid. I mean, I'm not mad at I mean, we're getting – we didn't lose our job. We're not like the guy at the restaurant guy is out on his ass with no money. And we're right. getting paid. So I'm not yeah. going to sit here and tell you that I'm not happy I got money in my pocket. But at the end of the day, like, it's got to go. We got to find a way. There's got to be a better leadership on finding a different way to do things besides being on front of a computer for eight hours a day. You know? mm -hmm. I'll drink to that. <laughs> and it's not – yeah, it's not – and it's not even it, – It's parents are going nuts. <laughs> they don't know. I think – but you know what? I think they're finally understanding exactly what teachers do. Yeah. Right. Sure. Start, start appreciating appreciating what teachers do a little bit more. Absolutely. Cybel. Yes, sir. Get rid of that Yankee shit. Are you like a Red Sox fan or something? <laughs> I know. Man. <laughs> Fucking Giants, bro. You know this. Oh, that was the name of my T-ball team, man. Somebody asked me last night during last night's clinic. I was like, it's, it was the name of my T-ball team. My family was a football family. They didn't really like baseball. So I was a Yankee fan. But we sucked in the 80s. I'm, I remember I'm old enough that, that they were getting their butts whooped by the Bash Brothers in Oakland. They were losing 100 games a year. You ever heard of Jesse Barfield? That was their best player. Jesse Barfield. <laughs> right? You remember that guy? Toronto. <laughs> Toronto. Yeah, we got him from Toronto, yeah. And then Scott Sanderson. That was yeah, our okay. ace. There's like famous ABA names of basketball. ABA names. <laughs> we'll, we'll be free. You know, those, those are like crazy old names. <laughs> All right. Okay, so um, I started the recording a little too early because I'm going to have to edit all this crap. But um, whoever's running hosting uh, through the presentation, uh, make sure that you're checking the uh, – you're checking the, cause we're getting guys that are coming off um, at different times, um, central uh, mountain. We got guys coming from um, other countries. I got guys that are continuing to pop on right now as I'm talking. Um, so just make sure you're checking the waiting room, letting guys in um, during your presentation. I'm gonna push my presentation. I was gonna do, I think third. I'm gonna push mine all the way to the end. Cause I think what the other coaches have to say is gonna be a little bit more important. Um, a lot of my stuff is going to tie into what they say, but it's just kind of building um, toughness and culture and um, things like that. More, more of that kind of stuff within your weight room. But uh, so let's see. We got Peter, Peter Noonan coming up first. Um, Peter, if you guys all got the bio, I sent a bio out to everybody, but uh, um Peter, why don't you go ahead? I'm going to give you hosting duties. Um, why don't you go ahead and um, introduce yourself a little bit? He's got a podcast. He's been doing some positive stuff with his time. He put together a podcast and stuff during this uh, COVID. Um, I encourage anybody out there. <clears throat> we were taught, we were thinking of um, doing breakout rooms. It just depends on how many people we end up getting. Um, I anticipate half of our participants or half the people or more than that are coming from other countries. So they might not even catch it till the replay, but um, feel free to ask questions, put them in the box or unmute yourself. Um, the whole thing's about having like a round table type discussion with these coaches. So feel free to ask. That's what they're here for. They love to talk football. They want to spread knowledge. Um, if you have a little opinion about something or something that you run like that or similar, but you kind of do this, Throw it out there. Who cares? It that's the whole point. Let's just strike up conversation. So, um, Peter, I'm going to give you hosting duty, sir. And then, um, yep, we're recording. And yeah, just continue to make sure we're checking on the uh, waiting room. All right, guys. <clears throat> cool, man. Right, Peter, it's on you. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, sir. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. Man, it's it's an honor. Um... I'm really excited about this. I've been uh, thinking about exactly what uh, what to write, what to say. Um, you know, so Mark asked me to uh, to talk about defensive line. Um, 
you know, fundamental or not necessarily fundamentals, but um, you know, building a, a program uh, mindset and, and your, your philosophy. So I'm, I'm going to kind of present that um, and I'll just go through it. I, mean, we won't, I personally won't get into X's and O's, but um, I'm happy to talk with it uh, regarding all that stuff um, for anybody else that, uh, that would want to. You guys uh, seeing the, uh, the presentation full screen now? Okay, cool. So I'm the defensive tackles coach in uh, Pflugerville High School or Pflugerville Hendrickson High School in Pflugerville, Texas. That's uh, just about 20, 30 minutes outside of Austin. Uh, this is my 12th year coaching. Uh, I have bounced around the state of Texas, uh, a few different metroplexes, Houston and Dallas. I've uh, been in South Texas. Um, I've coached anywhere from a uh, a 3A high school all the way to uh, a 5A, 6A high school. Um, so I've seen the gamut of, of a variety of different kids, um, you know, and and so I, I feel like I've learned learned a, a good deal, but I still have a long way to go, and I'm excited about that. You know, every time I go to a new place, it's about establishing uh, what I desire out of the unit that I'm coaching. Uh, so particularly when I'm coaching the defensive line, you know, I'll <clears throat> what I expect from them, what they should expect from me, how we work together to help each other out, uh, whether they have the potential to go to college and play ball, or they're just going to be uh, better human beings once they leave high school. You know, that's kind of the goal for me in that regard. Uh, this is something I came up with last year coming into um, my transition to Hendrickson, um, you know, Specifically, being D, a D tackles coach, we're predominantly going to be spill players, uh, and, you know. And then, obviously, depending on the defense that you run, you're going to be have your ends uh, be spill or box players. But you know, just trying to keep something simple and easy to remember uh, from a philosophy standpoint. You know, the first S uh, in spill. We want to be smart students of the game, right? We want to know how to defeat our opponents. Um, on a weekly basis, as well as know how to defeat our own worst self uh, as well consistently, right? The, the, the biggest opponent you have is the man in the mirror and being able to, to take him on in that regard. Secondly, uh, we want to be physical, consistent investment, increasing size, strength, mobility, flexibility, and conditioning, right? It's not just getting bigger in the weight room, but it's being able to bend, it's being able to move. Uh, those are huge components of, of just being a better defensive lineman, right? Because uh, you're only going to be so tall. You're only, your arms are only going to be so long, you know, and, and your wingspan is only going to be so much. Everything else you have control over. Instincts, right, our, our fundamentals have to be second nature, just like breathing, right? Uh, if, if we're a, if you're a heavy, you know, uh, shock and shed, um, you know, punch and stun kind of guy, that's got to be instantaneous. Your get offs, uh, the way you attack blocks and, and your primary moves from a pass rush standpoint, you want those to be uh, to the point where, they, you know, they can breathe and do those things consistently. Uh, sometimes it works out. Sometimes it takes a long time to get there. Uh, but those are the key things fundamentally that we need to be able to do. You know, uh, we want to be lightning fast off the ball. Okay. We need to know our keys. Uh, if, you know, this past year and in the year years prior, uh, we became a uh, man key. So what we carried is either the near knee or the near foot of the offensive lineman. Uh, we, we did not necessarily key the ball, uh, because we had, we had a lot of teams that would hard count us uh, because we were pretty explosive off the line as an entire defensive line unit. So we knew that going into the season, uh, both myself and the defensive ends coach uh, were, were familiar with teaching how to key uh, near knee, near foot. And so we, we had only, I would say, oh, maybe five, five or six offsides penalties the entire season. We, we were able to play a uh, – uh, 10 or 11 game season, went two rounds in the playoffs, lost to a very good uh, Fort Bend Hightower team. But, uh, you know, 
go the, you know, knowing what your, your keys are to get off the ball, knowing you're down in distance, right? That's going to help you as well, right? And that goes back to being a smart student of the game. And then the last thing is being a lunch pail deal, right? You want to be a hard hat, you know, effort type of guy, clock in, clock out, and just come and do your work. Uh, defensive line is much like offensive line. It's not a um, it's not necessarily a glamorous position. It's a little more glamorous than the offensive line, but at the end of the day, games are won and lost based on the guys in the trenches. Uh, and you guys know as well as I do, it's extremely important that those guys are are, are you know just hard workers. Uh, if they're prima donnas or you know, all they want to do is rush the pass, uh, great. But I don't know about how you guys are with, with the teams that you face in your your areas. But uh, we still get a heavy dose of running the ball. Um, and we had some teams run on us and have some success because we didn't take the right kind of mindset this past year. Uh, we were a little too preoccupied with rushing the passer. Uh, we didn't even have to get to that point because we, we struggled a little bit to stop the run. Uh, but I know that we'll bounce back, we'll get better, and we'll go from there. So uh, any questions so far on, on the philosophy side of things? The other component to me is uh, us as coaches, right? Um, one of the things that we talk about is what is it, what does it look like to the for the kids, and what do we expect from the kids? Uh, but what what do we have to expect from us as coaches, right? You as a as a football coach in general, right? Whatever position you coach, they typically reflect you as a personality, whether you're a fiery guy, you're an even keeled guy, um, what have you, you know, so, so for me, you know, I, my goal was to, to try and get my guys to be the, the first ones in last one out type of guy, always trying to do extra. Uh, it, I had predominantly seniors with me. So, you know, how, if you transition from one place to the next and they've transitioned uh, one or two coaches, it, it can be a little challenging to get that buy-in. Um, I was fortunate enough to have some really good guys that did buy-in. Now we didn't get all the way to first in, last out mentality, uh, but the younger guys were buying into that. And so I'm excited about what lies ahead, not just from a talent standpoint, but from a work ethic standpoint. Uh, right now we're, we're in our second day of off season. And, you know, aside from the ones that are Virtual right now for various reasons. The guys that are in person are getting after it. All right. So it fires me up every day, which means I want to be the best coach that I can for those guys. Um, the other thing is in talking with them, I want to know how they're learning, right? If what I'm saying is not connecting with them, then I need to figure out a better way to explain that to them. I can't be so hardened in my ways and in my terminology that I can't adjust. Uh, and I think a lot of times we get very married to ideals and, and things. And I'm not talking about non-negotiables, right? I'm talking about, well, you know, we, we're doing it this way because I've always done it this way. And, you know, damn it, Nick Saban does it that way. So Nick Saban's got rings. Well, well great. But Nick Saban also has some dudes. So it's a little bit different, right? He's got the cachet uh, because he has the rings, but it took some time to develop that stuff. And he's got to have the right guys around him to, to continue to help with the buy-in. So for me and, and the expectations of my guys, uh, we want to read playbooks or handouts, however you give that stuff. You know, we did a lot of stuff via Zoom uh, back in March, all the way through the season, um, whether it was in video or not. We didn't, you know, paper copy stuff. Um, and we didn't necessarily have a defensive playbook but we did a lot of uh, X's and O's on the chalkboard or on the whiteboard or on the Zoom whiteboard, uh, teaching what we wanted, breaking down the film clips and leaving notes and comments about how we wanted things to be done. Uh, the deal is when we rep the technique, not every drill is gonna be fun, but every drill is necessary because it's about getting better. Uh, and we wanna rep it until it becomes something you can't mess up, right? The, the old Bruce Lee quote, 
I don't fear the man that that's practiced a thousand kicks one time. I fear the man that's practiced one kicks a thousand times. That's us, right? That's, that's the mentality. That's the mindset we want to have is those guys are so worried about us because we may only have one or two moves and we may take on a block one or two different ways, but we're extremely efficient in the way that we do it. Um, the mentality at the end of the day is when we're on the field, I cannot be blocked by one guy and I cannot be moved by two. Um, and, and every time that I put my hand on the ground, whether it's in practice, the game, or just running, a, you know, running some kind of conditioning, it, it has to mean something. And I, and I got those last two bullet points uh, from coach Ricky Kuhn. He's the, the uh, head football coach at Dodge city community college um, in, in, in Kansas. And uh, he, he was a great resource that I was able to reach out to and talk to uh, this past year, uh, starting all the way back in March. And uh, he's just he's just a great coach, great person, loves kids. Um, you know, I highly encourage you guys to look him up on uh, on Twitter. Um, reach out to him. Reach out to Dodge City Football. They, they got a great staff. Our objectives, this is what we go into on a week-to-week -week basis. Um, regardless of who we play, uh, these are, these are you know, our week-to-week non-negotiables, right? We want to disrupt the line of scrimmage, win the point of attack. We want to tackle well. We want to be uh, refuse to be uh, blocked. Uh, we want to affect the outcome of every play, right? Uh, we want TFLs. We want to destroy pullers. We want to disrupt the... the the path of the, uh, of the running back sacks are great, but we want QB hits and we want to get the QB off the launch point. Obviously if he's a mobile guy, you got to know what your pass rush is, right? Know your rules in terms of that, but that's a game plan to game plan thing. You know, we, we face some extremely mobile quarterbacks and we said, look, your job this week is, is mush rush, contain rush, build the cage. You know, don't, don't get past him. Don't, don't let him out from uh from behind you keep them in front of you right so we weren't looking for devastating pass rushes so we were just trying to get them flushed uh and and specifically to a direction based on pressure right well we want to create takeaways at the end of the day we always want to compete whether you're up by five up by 20 down by 50 we, we got to compete uh, because there's there's a whole lot of parallels to football in life as we know as coaches and and you know, whether you played high school, middle school, college, or pros, uh, you, you can see the similarities. And that's what we're trying to do ultimately at the end of the day, because there's only a finite amount of time that you will play the game of football. <clears throat> the other deal is, is how do you, how do you create a competitive and growth centered practice? Uh, I think this is a big deal that I, I'm really trying to get better at is, making sure that my drills translate to game film and that when we pull up the practice film uh, on the days that we're lucky enough to have our student filmers uh, or, or a coach has to uh, sacrifice some time and get up there. Our head coach was phenomenal about that, man. He, he, he took one for the team several times, get up there and film. And, and, and sometimes he only got a little bit of defense and some more of offense and vice versa. But it, it's, you know, you guys know as well as I do, Film is an invaluable tool and how you present that to kids is, is extremely important. You know, it's not just here's the film, take a look. Okay, bye. Right. <clears throat> it's, it, it's gotta be detailed and I'll cover that here in just a second. Um, you know, we want to teach, reteach, and then find a new way to teach if need be. I've coached a variety of different kids. Uh, I've used a hundred different ways to say, one one thing that to me and the majority of kids I've coached, it's simple. They get it the first or second time. But there's there's about five or six kids, and sometimes it's one of your best kids, right? Case in point for me this year, one of my best defensive tackles, it, it took a little bit about halfway through the year before I really realized that he was understanding what we did. And a lot of it had to do with reps, uh, but some of it was just he is who he is. Um, and he just needed to be talked to in a different way with different terminology and, and, and you know, 
presented from a different conceptual standpoint, and he got it. And in the last few games, he, he was able to be a force to be reckoned with. So uh, I just hope he comes comes back this, this next year with the right mindset. Uh, we want to incorporate drills that create competitive competition inside the group. Obviously, when you go to your your half lines, your inside hole, your your team, there's there's automatic built-in competition there because you're going against somebody else. But when you run your get-off drills, are you running get-off drills to run them to say you did them? Or are you running them to, to, to try and be better? You know, one of the best things that I loved is, is my guys took the initiative that when we, we did get off drills, they said, go stand over there, let us know who won, right? They wanted to compete. Uh, when we worked on our steer drill, you know, the, the guy that was the blocker, he, he did, was tasked with the job of not letting that other guy win, and he took it to heart. You know, it wasn't trying to be – um, an asshole or anything, but it just, it, that was the deal when it mattered and we got closer to game day and closer to crunch time, closer to the playoffs, you know, it, they really didn't want some of those JV guys around. They wanted varsity guy on varsity. Uh, when we went with the offensive line, you know, I tried to put best on best as much as possible in a controlled environment. Uh, but at the same time, I celebrated if an offensive lineman beat my defensive lineman, you know, because at the end of the day, we're all one team. And it's important that my defensive lineman know, okay, here's why you got beat. And I'm okay with my, with the offensive line coaches talking to my defensive lineman because they present a different perspective. Um, I think too many times we get, we get so hung up as coaches about, Hey man, don't coach my guy um, that we forget that somebody may have a better point of view because they're not as invested the way that we are when we get in with our kids, right? Our, our, our position players become like sons to us. Um, so, you know, sometimes you, you forget to take a step back and go, okay, well, I'm his coach. This is what he needs to hear versus telling him what you, what you want him to hear kind of thing. Um, and then we want to challenge each player before practice, give them a daily goal or a daily drill. If they're struggling with alignment, man, today, hey, look, you need to line up 100% today. No no alignment, right? The, the, the two most important things we can do is line up and tackle, okay? Well, you, you're ace in alignment. Great, okay? Uh, we're going to face a lot of pullers this week, a lot of gap scheme, right? You, you, you got to make sure that you, when you attack every puller, you do it the right way, however it is that you're teaching them to do that. Right. Or, or, you know, if we're pass heavy this week, I'm not so worried about you, you know, rushing the QB, um, you know, especially if you having to go against your JV or your scout team and it's, there's a step down in ability level, right? Well, they're going to be, they're going to look like they're all world pass rushers. Great. They're not. It's the JV. Okay. Can you keep the quarterback in front? Can you get your hands up? Can you knock some balls down? Right. While still trying to give, the back end some looks, especially when we go team. Uh, and last thing I had alluded to earlier is when we look at film, right? How are you watching film with your, with your guys? A lot of times we talk about when we're on the field, you got to coach fast, coaching short, uh, short words, short bits, right? Um, but we want to make sure when we go to film, it's a smaller group. We can go a little slower. We can give more feedback. Um, <clears throat> when, I, when I watch film, uh, the way that our school day was structured, I had some time before we got to uh, after school film meetings because we practiced in the morning. So I could look at practice film, pick the you know, 20, 20 clips or whatever, because we try to keep it about 25 to 30 minutes of film. And even then that can get pushing it. You know, 20, 20, 25 minutes is pretty much max for a high school kid's attention span. Um, and if you start going over that, they're done. They've got other things on their mind. You know, you start, you know, stomach starts growling. You're wondering what what's being made for dinner or, uh, or you know, what do you got to do after kind of thing. So I look at the clips. I say, OK, uh, I like this, this and this. I need to show them this, this and this to work on. All right. And I'm not just pulling the clips and making the cut up. 
I'm circling, I'm pointing, I'm drawing, and I'm making notes so that when they go back, hopefully that night and review it, all right, because if, if you've got Huddle or whatever video service you use, it's pretty much you can access it anywhere from, from anything at all times of the day. So a lot of those kids, they want the film, they want to see it. And whatever you have told them in that moment in time, they may remember, they probably won't. But at least if you've got those notes on those cut-ups, now that gives them a concrete deal to go back to and look at and read and review. Uh, then when we watch film of our opponents, right, you want to keep them engaged, ask them questions. Don't be it. Don't make it about what you're trying to say, uh, especially after your, you know, your first day install. Every time you watch opponent film, check the down and distance, right? What is their key based on splits or stance? Uh, a lot of times, you know, if you're really paying attention, you know who's pulling because they're sitting back or you can determine if it's run or pass based on the way that they're pointing. Um, you know, when we look at a pass rush deal, uh, I learned this from, from a guy I worked with a few years ago in the Dallas area. You know, he talked about, are they, are they leaners as an offensive lineman? Do they, do they push forward when even in their kick slide, are they, uh, are they heavy towards, towards you? Uh, or, or are they punchers? So they sit back, they're waiting for you to execute a move and punch. Well, if they're a leaner, right, you got to attack them a different way than you would from a puncher, right? How do you get those guys off balance? Uh, and then that comes back to you and what you've coached those guys to do from a pass rush standpoint. And so they should know, especially those older guys, you know, I'm really good at a club rip. I'm really good at, at you know, club arm over. I have a great speed rush. Okay, great. You know what that is. How does that work against those guys? Obviously, from your interior guys, you know, there's not a lot of wiggle room uh, for a speed rush. It's, it, it's typically a speed power rush, as we call it, uh, or a long arm where you're trying to stay on the edge and, and work that. But you got to look at that and go, OK, is this, is this a stout guy that I'm going against? I may not be able to use that this week. i got to do something different. Uh, but that comes from film study and then using those drills to replicate that in the game, especially when it comes to screen recognition, you know, show them what they look like on screen and how they, what's the key that's going to, to tell them that they're retracing. Are they a, a show and throw uh, or are they just a complete, you let you buy, you know, what, what's the keys to that uh, will help those kids in terms of recognizing screens. Uh, you guys want to get a hold of me, man? Uh, it's easy. I'm pretty active on uh, Twitter and Instagram. Uh, like Coach said, uh, I do have a podcast. Um, we release an episode every Tuesday. I, I haven't released anything new uh, this this year, uh, but I will next week. Um, we we don't specifically talk X's nose on the podcast. It's a little bit more of a uh, a one on one interview with some some really awesome people. Uh, and I mix it up between football, um, strength, conditioning, um, and I'm going to dabble in a couple other other things this this week. Uh, if you want a great defensive line podcast, uh, check out Keep Your Pads Down with Ty Taylor. Uh, he's a good friend of mine, and he does a great job. And then I started a uh, Twitter chat on Tuesday nights at 7:30 uh, Central Time. All it is is if you look at the ha if you look in the hashtag disruption chat. Uh, we go for about an hour. I throw out five questions every 10 minutes, or I throw out a question every 10 minutes. So it gets us about five questions. Uh, and, and the amount of networking and exchange of ideas that goes from there, and then they can just be branched off into deeper dives down the line. Uh, it's just awesome. Um, and then if you, if you want anything from me, um, I don't know if you want this, this uh, presentation, but uh, I've got some other stuff. I've got access to, you know, some different playbooks and stuff that I'm happy to send you. Just shoot me an email. So I, I don't have all the secrets. I don't have all the answers. I'm in search of them as well. So anybody that reaches out to me, man, I'm going to ask you questions as well and try to learn from you. So appreciate you guys' time. And uh, thank you, Coach, for, for having me on. Yeah, thank you, Coach. Um, anybody got anything? Anybody got any questions? I have a question. 
Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this is Coach Sid. I know that your talk right now is mostly on uh, philosophy and mindset of defensive line, but you said something that I thought was really interesting. You said uh, you, uh, as you line up, you got you, you key a little bit on the inside foot. Can you just talk a little bit about that, uh, about uh, what, what a kid's looking uh, right before the ball snapped? Yeah, so we key near knee or near foot, um, and the idea is key something small that's going to move and tell you when to move. Um, the offensive line knows the snap count, so they're not necessarily looking at the ball um, the way that, uh, that you would be, right? If you're looking at the ball and then looking at the offensive line, you're going to be a little bit behind. Uh, obviously, on a third and long situation, it may change. Um, but on, an, on a regular down basis and particularly on, on predominant rundowns, when that foot or knee comes to me, right, I know I'm going to get some kind of out block or base block so I can go attack it now, right? And that's my trigger to go now. Um, if, I, if that foot goes away from me, like a, like a zone away or a puller, right, I'm going to look to collapse that knee, uh, collapse that, that uh, hip, all right. At the same time, something may come back to me. I may get a down block uh, or I may get a, a, a trap block, depending on on who you are. We, we faced a team that ran some influence trap on us this last year. So we'd get an out block on our three tech by the tackle uh, guard is blocking down or pulling away. And so then we're seeing the backside guard uh, coming to us, and, you know, and it kind of caught us a little bit and we were able to make adjustments, but it was a little bit late, um, you know, but I don't know how often you see, you know, if you're, if you're seeing wing T teams, you're going to see a lot more trap uh, in your interior guys, obviously your ends, you know, they're going to see a lot uh, of, of pullers from the power and counter schemes. Um, the, uh, the other thing is if, if that knee retreats, right, it goes straight back. It's, it's get busy pass rush time. And the only reason you got to retrace is because, the indicator, right? They've let you go. Uh, you see the quarterback is drifting. You see the little skinny kid looking for the football in front of you that you run past. And if you would have tackled him, you would have been a, a you know negative play. But instead, you just kept on going because you had thought you were an all-world pass rusher and you go nowhere close to the quarterback. So, not that that's ever happened to to my guys before, but you know. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate that. Yeah. All right, Coach Walsh, I'll uh, I'm gonna write your email down, man, and I'll uh, I'll get that to you. Anybody else? Any questions? Comments? Nothing. That was awesome, Coach. Thank you. Thanks for doing that. Yeah, I'm gonna give you the host rights back, man. Sounds and good. Then, uh, so. Cool. Okay. So we have a coach here. Coach, is it Coach Wojtek? Yes, sir. All right. I'm, I'm, Really interested in this. Um, give yourself a little introduction. I mean, there's a lot here on your bio. I'm actually looking at it on my other screen. So, um, but right now, where are you at? So right now I'm in Poland and I'll be starting my new job in Denmark in February. Um, hopefully we have a season and hopefully we're going to get Corona under control um, again. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, I'm really interested to hear this. And um, um I may end up having a lot of questions just about how football is out there after the, after you're done with your presentation yes, stuff like that. So anyway, um, go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm going to give you um, hosting and then. Uh... All right, there you go, sir. Got you. Appreciate you coach. <clears throat> Guys, can you see the presentation or uh, good there? Yeah, you're good. Yeah, so uh, firstly, Coach, thank you for, for allowing me to, to do that. It's uh, 
uh, Thursday here in Poland right now. Uh, my name is Wojciech Andrzejka, everybody calls me Wojt. Um, again, I've been fortunate enough to be involved in football for about 15 years now and uh, coached uh, in Europe. I uh, did um, an internship at Towson Tigers. I was like a defensive QC and uh, assistant defensive line coach back in 2019. Uh, did some high school football in New Jersey, worked for USA Football. Um, also coach in China a little bit, and I'll have some clips for you all uh, in Europe. I coach in Germany, Switzerland, Romania, Poland, and now I'm starting my, my thing in, in, in Denmark soon, so I'm excited for that. Um, I, I'm going to go quickly through the slides, and I'm going to focus more on the, on the, on the, on the film because I think it's, it's going to be cool for you just to see how our football is, is played um, outside the world. Uh, just let this... Let these guys in. Again, for me, it all starts with a four-way test. So you want to make sure that, you know, coaches trust coaches, coaches trust players, players have to trust coaches, and then finally, uh, players have to trust the, you know, other players to make sure that we are successful in the field, regardless of the scheme we're running or, you know, several other factors. Oh, and um, I extolled this pyramid, the defensive pyramid of success from one of the High school coaches was one of the AFC articles. So again, you can see the alignment assignment, reads and keys, uh, your technique, relentless uh, pursuit, you know, on the second level, some stuff that I'll be talking mostly today about. So the block destruction, perfect tackling, forcing turnovers, hopefully stopping the run. As we know, this is the this is the critical area for, for the, you know, uh, to being able to, to make the opponent um, one dimensional, stopping explosive plays for us as a D line, it's probably creating sacks. Um, and then, of course, no touchdowns, right? Um, again, one of my um, staples of the coaching philosophy, Dwight Schrute, before I do anything, I ask myself, would I need to do that? And the answer to that, to that is yes, I do not do that thing. And again, as, as Coach said, you know, we want to build a culture of the room, stuff that we did for back when we were in Germany, Kempton, um, at south of Bavaria, and at that, that time the movie was pretty big, so we had a, we had a good group. Um, a little bit of coaching outside of the, of the States. Uh, you have these guys for maybe two times a week. Sometimes you, you get extra uh, walkthrough, but uh, you're not really um, blessed with, uh, with the facilities. So, you know, sometimes you may have a meeting, but it's mostly club structure. So these guys on, on the senior team, they are 18, but you, you may also have guys 30 and 35 year olds playing. So, you know, there's a different, different uh, set of problems, different guys. Uh, different motivations. So for example, in Germany, top division, when you will see the film, you get some players that are paid, uh, Americans, for example, or European, then you have guys who pay their, their monthly dues to be part of the team. Uh, again, it all starts in the trenches, kind of cliche for this group, but hey, this is, uh, as Coach said, we, you want to make sure that these guys who often don't get the, the recognition on, or don't get the sacks, you want to make sure that these guys um, feel valued and appreciated. Again, three things to remember, you know, we must have great attitude, give great effort, and then sold fundamentals. Uh, and again, for us, it's great get off. We're going to talk a little bit about the uh, block destruction and block recognition and, and pass rush and tackling. So um, I, what, I, what I'll do now, and I'll send you the PPTs, there's nothing really uh, groundbreaking that you, don't, that you do not already know probably, but I would like you to have the opportunity to... Um, kind of watch the film and there will be some stuff from, from Towson, some stands and BGO. So that's a little stuff from the living camp. You'll see my, me setting up the drills for the boys. Um, a little bit of warm up work. And again, you know, first chopping, chopping hands. So the progression versus the run. And then we're going to have the um, guys doing the, the pass rush BGOs. So this is obviously division one FCS level. So it's a, uh, a little different than an over over in Europe. We start hopefully gonna get some, yeah, closing speed, you know, closing the distance with the quarterback. Then I wanna show you, um, hopefully I'll have it, yeah. So what I like to do sometimes, and I, and I like to steal those clips from Twitter, you know, change the stimuli, so make sure they work on the tennis ball or you know, sometimes we just roll them a soccer ball and make sure that we change them the the um, the, the stimuli for go. A little hand fight here. This is not really the, the, the thing. 
Again, as Coach said, and I'm piggybacking off him, whatever you do, you know, scheme-wise and uh, um, do a game that you want to work on. So this is a little bit of, for us of our ladding and, and short sticking. And here we have long sticking. So uh, make sure that they, that they work on that. And, you know, it's, it's real daily, part of our ADDs. So, again, nothing that you probably don't know. Um, but, again, I believe we gotta we got to make sure that we are great in fundamentals. Next thing that I want to show you a little bit um, is uh, – oops. Give me a sec. I want to show you our little bit of block destruction, block recognition, uh, the stuff that we do. Um, uh, we really li like to use the USA football – uh, tip of the spear stuff. I think it's it's uh, uh, easy for, for us to access and it's it's um, working for our guys. So I don't know if you're familiar with the with it. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you some clips and some some game clips as well. The blog recognition. Hopefully, you guys can you can see the screen. Uh, come on, coach. Share that. Boom. Okay. So this is going to be we have some technical difficulties here. Come on. Okay, so this is one of the clips from, from Germany. So that's the GFL. We're going to see one of our guys, nice shed and tackle here. TFL, boom, recognizes block destruction, good, good um, new shoulder tackling. We believe in that. It's keep keeping our guys safer. And as you know, overseas football is not as popular and there's still, you know, the stereotype that, hey, if my Peter's going to play the game, he's going to, you know, he's going to end up on a wheelchair. So we want to make sure that these guys stay safe and that uh, they're going to be working there again versus zone away. You want to make sure that they surf. They keep the keep the hands on the new hip again. Our DN makes a play here. Pretty good guy. He was um, national team for in Germany. He finished that year. He finished uh, fourth in um, TFL and uh, fifth in SAC. Here we're gonna have a clip of destroying the, strong, the puller, but our um, our DN here. Boom. This is this is lower division in Germany again. This is like fourth league. You'll see we have a. Uh, the guy makes a completion, but again, I'll give it to him. And our D-line was pretty um, pretty disciplined here. Again, as you see, I'm not a um, – and I think – sorry. As you see, I'm, I'm not very anal about their stances. Again, it's – you got to make sure that these guys feel comfortable. You know, you may not always get the most talented kids playing for you, so we've got to make sure that these guys um, do the – get the job done and that they um, – uh, they are effective, right? Again, um, blog, blog recognition versus the screen. And you'll see this is our, our uh, one of our new guys. He was playing for the team too. And then he moved up to the seniors. And you'll see they retrace. And, you know, again, you have a guy who is uh, making a play. You'll see it's a little pleasantries here with our defensive tackle. Oh, flop by the, by the Americans. He goes to Europe and he learned, learned how to flop. Again, hopefully, again, this is the this is a great clip of our our D end, uh, recognizing the block, transitioning into rush, boom. Again, as coach said earlier, you know you want to make sure you affect that, that quarterback. Like, this is the guy, the quarterback. He was like NFL practice squad. So, okay, let's let's get to our to our um, pillar technique. So make sure that you have a nice wide base, uh, feet facing outside. You shoot your hips. You want to make sure that you're, you're, you strike with the palm of the hand, the tip of the spear, uh, your, your um, um, thumbs, they, they point um, up. Make sure you, you uh, accelerate and um, force that strength. So again, you can use a, a go pad or um, again, a pop-up. One, one of the good drills. Oh, this is a good drill as well, the refit drill. So you put on a do it again with you all. So to make sure that you, you put one uh, one hand on the breastplate of the or the breastplate of the partner and the other hand on this on his um, on his shoulder. That's that's a neutral position. And as you get closer, you want to make sure that those thumbs are ro rotating out. And as he 
and this is where, where you start the drill. So this guy wants to wants to get here, and as he as he puts his hand on the, you know, underneath the, uh, underneath the, the the shoulder pads, underneath the the, the breastplate of the pads, you want to do it with the with the other hand, and you guys gradually at speed. Do that. Again, uncle those hips. Hopefully, hopefully you get there. So you want to make sure that you have those. Those circles are, ta are tied that you don't do the windmill because for the first guy who does the windmill, he, he loses. So you see, they work nice and slow. Again, Scott Peters right now, I think he's the assistant defensive, assistant offensive line coach for the Browns. So this, this stuff is really getting some momentum back because this guy has had a, the Browns had a really good success against the, the steer drill that the coach said or how we would define it as a, um, Latch and slide again. One, one more clip. Boom. You see perfect technique here. One of our stud defensive defensive line makes a great tackle. Finishes with a roll. What do we have here? Oh, I think we're going to roll into the same, same stop. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into the next one. Um, I think the next thing that I have for you all is a little bit of our tackling talk. Something that I feel very, very passionate about. Something that I um, I think it's super important nowadays to keep our kids in the game, in the sport, and uh, <clears throat> it's uh, we're we're not under attack as you guys are in this in the states, but I think for us it's still hey, how can we get um, improve those numbers? How can we get more kids to play? And uh, you know how can we get better athletes to play? Because because that's the other thing, you know. Once you you have the better ones, you have better chances of competing on a national level or, you know, international level in the cops or, you know. Give me a sec. Getting there. And one of, one of the drills that I think you guys can, can do and prepares you for contact is the shoulder battle. So these guys are having a nice, nice wide base. They are connected with the shoulders left and right shoulder, something that you can use also as a conditioning. You don't need really a, a, a big hoop here. What you have here, okay, this is the this is the run and gather drill, but I wanted to show you the the, the first drill, so I'll may, I'll may do it. I'll show it to you again. As you see, these guys are nice flat back and make sure to keep, keep those cleats in the grass. Kind of, if, if they are not wrestling, it prepares them for contact a little bit. And for, for example, for, for my guys, it's essential because they don't wrestle in the off season. <clears throat> Again, what I, ah, this is my, my man, Johannes. It's one of, the, one of the most awesome clips and you'll see the difference between a veteran and a, and a rookie versus, versus a zone play. So you'll see Lucas uh, overplays it. He doesn't, he doesn't um, serve here, so miss the tackle. Johannes executes a perfect, perfect tackle for a loss. Epic down for a great win for us that year. There we go, good teammate. Um, band tackle. I, I like to add to it a little bit of tracking component. So we use the we use the power bands whenever we can get it. Give me a second. And you wanna you wanna work on it uh, with the with the roll or with a fire and drive. Make sure that these guys execute the, the solid clamp. So whenever he executes the tackle, you wanna you wanna make make sure that this guy he pulls this power band away from him. Make sure that he finishes the tackle. Uh, I'm going to show you the clip from last year. I, I was um, coaching a nine-man football in Poland. You'll see one of our guys, number 90, Michal, great guy. See, um, working on it, I'll, I'll prefer him to, and this is the other thing, I'll prefer him to control the ball carrier to the ground, and you'll see uh, one thing I haven't talked to you already about it, um, forcing turnovers, and you see even though the, we ended up uh, not getting the fumble, this is the same drill. The power band here, I think it's a, it's a small um, it's a small twist of, of you know of a regular drill, but it can be huge benefits for you all. One arm tear again, new new pack, new shoulder, executed, secure the tackle, and then rip with the with the other hand to secure that clamp, drive him back. So this is the other drill called pong, and this is in this version here you have a blocker here. And the, the, the sole point of the blocker is to execute the pressure for us. And as a defensive lineman, we often work on the 
on this cl close quarter. So we have four cones over here. This is the ball carrier who's going to go to this side. Then he's going to be, then you have a second offensive player who will go to this side. Then it's going to be the first one as well. And the fourth guy is going to go again. So you'll see the our defender starting and fighting the blocker. He has to tag him off on the near hip. Boom. So then he has to transition to the other guy. Now he has to swiftly transition to the other guy. Boom. Again, th this looks like a complete chaos, but hey, this is the, the game we play. And I think it's it's a good drill because you train your eyes and you'll see often on the zone reads and stuff or RPOs, you'll see that this guy manipulating our our eyes. So this is a this is a good drill, something that doesn't involve contact that I think you can it can benefit you. Um, it can benefit you in the off season. Again, um, next thing that I want to talk to you today about is a little bit about pass rush. And again, as coach said, I'm gonna I'm gonna piggyback out of I'm gonna piggyback on what coach said for us. Uh, we have different kids, different types. So it's um, want to teach them the concepts. You want to make sure that these guys understand um, the the relative. Uh, relative rush rush lanes and they, they, they stay disciplined. So very often we see very, you know, mobile quarterbacks, paid Americans who, who fly over to Europe, who have some either D1 or some even, you know, um, practice squad experience. So it's for our guys who are local guys or who may have a one American or one staff European, it's important for them to, to understand what we can do and, um, how we can contain that guy. So again, I'm going to show you a couple of clips. Again, this is this is again this is from Germany. One of our dudes ending up with a sack on this play. And this is this guy, boom, straight up, dips the shoulder, the twitchy guy. Again, this was not a called a what you call um, intentional grounding. I don't know for whatever reason, but hey. This is another good clip of we're going to be retracing and we're going to make sure that, hey, I'm in this no man's land. Boom. Again, I'm retracing. I'm, I'm giving effort. We get a sack. We'll stop, stop club. You know, you guys know the techniques. You know, I think, you know, you, you want to make sure that th these guys do the tricks that they can do. So you got to make sure that you find optimal what shoots them. Uh, you'll see on those clips, you know, you have guys working from two point stands, three point stands. Four point stands again, whatever works for them. And uh, I think this is the this is one of the one of those clips. Well, our our guy Janelle, British guy who played for us, you know, fast twitchy, so he's gonna be naturally working from uh, from a two point stance. You have PD over there working from four point stance. But uh, if he, if he's effective, if he's doing his job, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna deter him from from doing what's you know what's working there. Boom, dips the shoulder. Again, we get to the quarterback. Body in the backfield. Another great effort, probably the, the best game this kid played for us. And a little funny thing about this game, we had like 14 uh, defensive players who were pretty banged up. And two of our defensive line starters, they end up getting to the field like 45 minutes before before kickoff. So it was pretty pretty, pretty cool uh, experience, pretty, pretty good win for us. Just effort, right? Just is getting there nonstop, and this is what we want. Janelle, just pure speed dip. Boom. Keep chasing the guy. Yeah, so that, that would be it. Um, again, I'm not gonna teach you guys how to how to uh, teach pass rush because I know you guys know it. So uh, you know, I just want to maybe share some of some of the stuff that we do. Again, it's uh, developing the what, what's best, what's what suits our players, right? And it's also um, working sometimes with them on the individual stuff. Sometimes these guys have uh, long hours. You know, sometimes we um, they have night shifts and stuff, so we organize it with them like an individual session in the, in the afternoon. Something I haven't I haven't talked to you about yet, but I think it's uh, it's critical. It's forcing turnovers and uh, <clears throat> making sure that these guys feel comfortable around the football. You know, it's um, oh, this is the clip that I want to finish with. Um, but before we get there, you know, for for me personally, I like to warm up with the defensive circuits um, just to make sure that these guys. 
um, understand, you know, and they have, um, they work together, they, you know, they work across the unit and that they, they know how to, how to uh, recover a fumble, how to, how to get that pick, you know, where they, they see JJ Watt making those, those plays. And this is a, this is one of the cool clips you, you'll see it's from China. Uh, it's their like uh, national championship game uh, for the university league. And you'll see one of our, for some strange reason, one of our DNs is gonna is gonna peel over the running back, picks it off, still the victory for us. Everybody loves when the when the big man scores the scores the touchdown. So again, it was a great win, great great upset for us. Um, we were there in 2016. Um, yeah, this is the, the drill I stole from the Patriots. Um, like three and one, so we have a guy who makes an interception, and you have a um, forcing fumble, and then a fumble recovery. Again, my, in my circles, I like to mix them up. So, you know, we have linebackers working with the DBs, et cetera, et cetera. But I like this drill because it, it connects um, all like drills and all, all phases within one. So there's high return on investment. Bing, bang, boom. We have the country, country recovery. Yeah. Drill that I, I stole from Coach Goss, and I'm going to give him a shout out from, from Towson. So pick pow drill and it simulates fighting for the ball. Shoot. Clip from Switzerland from last year. So you're gonna I'm sorry about it. So you, what you want to have is like four guys in a, a six-point stand. So their knees, their 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 hands and their, their toes are on the ground. And then as a, as a, you make sure that they have mouth guards in, helmets are strapped, you just you know, toss the ball inside. And ideally, yeah, you wanna you wanna you want them to finish on a fetal position. Something we um, you can incorporate. It's um, it also helps boost their competitiveness and uh, something I think can can pay huge dividends for you all when you see the guys fighting for the for the ball in the in the scrum. So yeah, so that was it. So that was the that was the that was the film. Um, again. Again, stances. Again, if you guys want, I can share share that with you all. Um, you know, blog recognition, you know that stuff. You know, I don't think I have to, to teach you that. Again, one thing that I'll, I'll recommend to you all is that you know, the tip of the spear stuff. I think it really helps. You know, really helps with the guys who are maybe not as physical, but they have superior technique. You know, this is one of the one of the beautiful beautiful photos you see. He engages his hips. The the uh, toes are pointing out. Hands inside. Tackling, bang, bang, boom, pass rush again. You, have the, you want to pressure the, the bucket, right? You want to make sure that you compress that space around the quarterback, make, make him uncomfortable, you know, making sure that these guys, whenever you face that mobile guy, they, they, they keep him in, in front of them, you know, get offs and hand placements or types of rush. Again, if you guys want this presentation, I can send it to Coach Mark, and, you know, this is nothing uh, secretive about it. And if you'd like to, to connect, you know, this is my Twitter and my, my email. Um, again, I'm a little, a little earlier than I, than I wanted, but I, I you know, I, I don't want to, you guys have any questions, you know, I feel free to, to ask them. Hopefully you guys learn something from it. You know, hopefully you guys can see that football is being played now more than 80, 80 countries in the world. And I think it's, I think it's, uh, I think it's amazing. So hopefully you guys, uh, you guys took something out of it. Coach? Thanks, Coach. Anybody got any questions or anything? Do I know. Do you work on more on fundamentals, X's and O's, or the psychology of the game with your guys? Like, what do you, what do you have to work on most with your guys? To be fairly honest, you know, I, I want to make sure that uh, they know fundamentals. I mean, we got to – you know, football is such a technical sport, and, it's, you know, it's a lot, a lot of bases to cover. So if we want to be uh, as efficient as possible. So now, you know, 2020 and Zoom is perfect for us because we don't have like a physical office so we can, you know, um, have a like a Zoom meeting or I can, you know, we use Huddle. Um, but if, you know, it's it's kind of hard because it's, it's a little different when, when you have a guy who maybe, he may be in his early 20s and he can start, you know, learning football and you have to teach him stands, et cetera, et cetera, versus a guy who, who may have been with like, your U13, U15, U17 team, so all the like junior programs. And by the time he's 19 year old, he has been playing tackle football for five or six years. So it's just, you know, you want to make sure that this guy is, is developed and it's, you got to 
kind of treated case by case because, you know, some kids, you know, may have played Madden and then they, they may love football because they've seen some movies or they play Madden, but they are not athletes and you have to teach them everything. Some of the guys who have been playing soccer, maybe you wrestled, maybe you played rugby or basketball, should you want those guys because you just teach them a bit of fundamentals and a bit of, you know, scheme and, hey, you can go and, and play there. Just plug and play. But some guys, you know, they require a little bit more work. So um, and also depends on the you know on the level you play because in Europe it's you know even you know Division One in Germany it's different than you know Division One I don't know in Romania right or, or, or Switzerland right so it's it's kind of um, depending on the situation where you are but I would say you know you want to make sure that you work fundamentals daily and you know you got to offer some progression of course because even in your group you may have, you may have guys who are more experienced and you guys who just came up from, for example, from the junior team. So they may be, you know, less developed physically. So we got to work with them in the off season. I don't know if that answers your question. No, oh, yeah, it did. Where, where do they play the best? Like, as you were saying, Germany D1 is different than Romanian. Where yeah. do they probably play the, the highest level football in Europe right now? So definitely, I would say that it's going to be um, Germany, Austria. Nordic countries are pretty good and they are like the breeding ground for alignment because you see a lot of them, France is great athletes. You know, for example, what makes Germany unique is that there's a, like relatively the, the larger amount of, the largest amount of money being involved there. So for example, these guys can afford to have five, six Americans, like as, as a players, then you may get like a almost full coaching staff or like you may have a full coaching staff with like a couple guys being full-time and you, you have to get a license to play in like, for example, Germany, even now, like for Division Four, we need to have our U13 program, U15, U17, and U19. So you, you need to have, you may have like one year, you may have five or seven kids, but you need to work with them at the youth level. You know, Austria is pretty much the same, but, you know, for example, Poland, Romania, and like, you know, we were like, we were, we were catching up there, but Germany, when you have like, they had like their 42nd German ball that is scheduled for this year, it's a little different when, for example, when you compare it to Poland, where, when we had our 15 Polish ball last year. So there's a different tradition. And you see now, you know, all the colleges found that, hey, there is a lot of people in Europe and you have some freakish athletes there. And this is now the recruiting ground there as well. Yeah, that's cool. I think it's cool. I think it's crazy that it's spread that far. But I would never be sure. I wasn't sure football was ever going to make it across the water or I should think say about when the Chinese start playing that you know that's gonna be as you have, you have a lot of kids playing they're like youth football and they are you know this kid from Arizona State although he was not a he was oh, yeah. not a line there he made a big splash there and they're like they are you know there's NFL is, is investing there so hey it's, it's growing so I think I think it's great for the sport I think. You know, yeah me too and you guys are learning how to do it from probably better fundamentals just because I mean, because it's it, it's had such a history before, you know. So, all right, Coach, I really appreciate that. That was awesome. Um, anybody got anything else? No? I'm going to send you those, those PPPs. All right. Coach. Coach, one last thing. Yeah. Coach Votek. Uh, does this the military, is the military, um, like the American bases and stuff, do they get involved with their with their kids, or did anybody coach involved, like the military bases around the countries? So I know that, like in Polish, because we have now some bases in, in Poland, but I, I don't know if they are like we had them involved in the sense that, um, like you had American soldiers just being at the game and kind of doing their. I know there's high school football around bases in Europe, and, and this is a, another entity because you have. Because we play on like NCA rules minus one year, but you have football run bases is played with high school rules, but it's like it's a different entity. Like I don't have really, I know that they that they, that they play um, some ball there. I do, it's not really like um, video stream or whatever, so it's hard to to get a footage of it. But I know that there's, you know, I know that in Germany the, there's there you have some some. Uh, some bases. I know that some coaches, you know, whenever um, they have some, they are off duty and stuff. They are, they are getting involved in like local clubs. I know that like I was um, when Coach Franklin and some of his Penn State stuff. They flew to Wiesbaden because there is there is the base there as well. So they did some stuff, at, you know, at the base, and they kind of could see the local town as well in Germany. So yeah, it's it's cool that 
There's a coach on from Germany, Dennis Operman. Oh, awesome. he said, yeah, he said he said there's a there's a base league in Europe. Um, Weisbaden, Ramstein. Yeah, Weisbaden, Ramstein should go. There we go. Yeah. Thanks, coach. Yeah, that's right. That's my home country, boys. My great grandparents came over on the boat from Germany. Right. <laughs> All right. Hey, thank you, coach. I really appreciate it. That was awesome. I'm glad we connected, man. I'm sure this will end up being a, a, a really a long term thing. I'm excited about it. Yes, sir. Good All right. Guys. I'm going to reclaim host here. And then if you guys want to take a break, um, go get a bite to eat, something to drink. I don't know, something. Use a restroom. And then up next, we got my boy, Coach Costa. Matt, if you guys saw him, he was here on one of the first, the first one we did. Um, but he will he will talk your ear off about D-line football all day long, huh, buddy? <laughs> all right. So we'll come back at 4.05. Go ahead and take a break real quick, guys. Um, yeah, we'll be back. All right. I think you're good. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, there you go, sir. All right. All right, guys. Uh, my name is Matt Costa. I'm the head of uh, football coach at Pleasant Grove High School in Elk Grove, California. Uh, TJ and I uh, work in the same district together. Um, had a lot of uh, him and I have been connected now for a number of years. Good dude. Can't wait to hear him speak. Always, uh, always good to hear him speak. A um, little background about myself. Um, I'm one of those guys that um, – ends up getting these jobs that are not the ones that people want. And uh, I usually take those things over and those are the ones that I like. And I like the building phase of rebuilding football programs and building a football culture at those schools. Um, this is my third rebuild project at Pleasant Grove. Uh, before then I was at, um, I was at Kennedy high school. I was actually there with Mark. Uh, Mark helped me uh, resurrect that program a little bit. Uh, started out 0 and 10, finished there 8 and 4, uh, or 8 and 4, excuse me, 8 and 2 uh, in our fourth year. Um, left there after year number five and went to Pleasant Grove. Um, kind of the same deal. They were 0 and 10. Just tried to continue to build that thing and um, create a good sound football culture. Uh, this last year, we ended up uh, going 6 and 5. We actually lost to TJ in the playoffs in a pretty good game. Um, and uh, yeah, so today we're going to talk about D-line fundamentals, some of the things that we do at Pleasant Grove. Um, you know, um, I've been blessed to be around um, some great football coaches, right? I mean, the great thing about being in Sacramento and about being in, um, in the location that we're at is we're always, we're surrounded by uh, JCs that have just tremendous football programs and high schools that have tremendous football programs. And so a lot of the stuff you're going to hear today is stuff that I've stolen from other guys and fit into the system that we use at Pleasant Grove. We're a four, two, five team. Um, you know, we just, uh, it's a defense that I believe in strongly um, it allows for us, it allows us to get the, the best athletes that we have at Pleasant Grove on the field at all times. And um, for us, the defensive line is one of the most important components to that defense. That is the position that I coach. Um, I'm passionate about defensive line. I think it's the best friggin' position on the field. Just my opinion. Um, I know that Mark will probably argue with me on that all day since he coaches quarterbacks. But Anyway, um, just oh, man, you guys, D line and O line is the absolute most important. That's <laughs> all glamour, man. Yeah, I just I love coaching D line. I think those dudes are great. Those guys are selfless, um, and I and I just absolutely love it. So anyway, um, so for us, and the thing that I want to talk about today is for us, it's all about step strike extend. So everything that we do from pass rush to jelly wrong arm when we're stop, stopping trap plays and down plays um, to how we handle zone, how we handle all that stuff, all begins up front with step strike extend. 
Um, and for us, that's, that's the root of our run fit. Okay. Um, we teach step strike extend with our linebackers. It's a little bit different how we teach it with them, but for us, that is everything. Once we get that in, everything else that we teach comes off of step, strike, and extend. Um, so, talking a little bit about our goals as a defensive line, I'm a big thing. I'm a big fan of trying to keep things simple as possible. Um, so, you're going to see that a lot of the things that we do, our drills are cut down to where like we might only have two or three drills that emphasize one specific thing okay um our goals number one uh reset the line of scrimmage we want to create not back knock back um our goal is to take that line of scrimmage and replace that line of scrimmage a yard back into the backfield um second thing um hold on a second i want to move you guys a little bit out of the way here so the second thing is um oh i fast forwarded this a little bit let me back up here all right. So the second thing, um, we want to destroy the integrity of the blocking scheme in the run and allow our linebackers to fold and overlap. Um, if you ever get an opportunity, when, if you guys want to talk about the 425 and how we talk about run fit, and you're going to hear me talk a little bit today about protecting the middle of the chessboard, everything that we talk about with our linebackers um, comes to fold and overlap. When we talk about run fit, we talk about making – the first level right, making the second level right, second level being the linebackers. Um, we won't get into that too uh, uh, really today, but that's a concept that we could talk about later on. And last, I see um, the defensive line as a component in assisting the coverage by pressuring the quarterback. Um, how we get to pressure the quarterback, um, for me, again, comes off of step strike extend. If that guy is pass proing me and I get my uh, visual key coming at me, let's say they're doing slide progression and that visual key is crossing my face. I'm teaching my guys, we're going max contact pass rush right now. Step, strike, extend, bang. We want to get that guy as far away from us as possible. Okay, so our philosophy when it comes to playing defensive line play. Number one, we want to play the run on the way to the quarterback. OK, so I believe that by playing the run on the way to the quarterback, I can take that offensive line and reset it a yard back into the backfield. Uh, the second thing is we want to create an island in the storm. So for us, that island in the storm is the most basic fundamental we teach for the defensive line and step strike extend for our defensive scheme. It's our tight G front cover two robber. So those things for me create that island in the storm. So when things are going crazy, because inevitably at one time, at some point in the game, there's going to be something that's going to go wrong. You have to be able to go back to the most basic fundamentals and schematic that you have to create that island in which the kids feel comfortable in playing. Uh, the third bullet point, we believe that step strike extend is the most basic skill you need to be successful. I might have a turd athletically, right? But if that dude can step strike extend with the best of these other guys, I can utilize him to give my better athletes a blow when they need it, okay? Uh, fourth, we teach our scheme and technique through our drill set. So even though I'm, I'm robbing drills from other people and tweaking them to fit my needs, when I use a drill, I'm looking at it as number one, how can I teach my most basic fundamentals? But number two, how can I, um, how can I use that drill to help me teach the scheme? I'm not one of those guys that wants to sit back and talk with a group of high school kids for 20 minutes about tight G and all the great things that we can do out of tight G. That doesn't, that to me is, is a waste of time. Like I'll take five or 10 minutes to talk about alignment, but then after that, it's time to go drill. And those drills are going to emphasize or help to emphasize the stuff that we talked about during that install period. 
Um, much of our stuff that we do is done on the sled and it's done using our ter- our scheme and terminology and our language. Um, for an example, when we do six point progression on the sled, we're either going to be head up or shaded. But when I talk about that stuff, I'm going to tell that defensive tackle, hey, I want you lined up in a three technique on the sled. So that emphasizes our terminology language within the drill set that we're running. Last but not least, we talk violence. I want our dudes to be violent, period. I'm totally okay with using violence on a regular basis to emphasize how I want our dudes to get off, how I want our dudes to strike, how I want our guys to extend, how I want our guys to make tackles. I want our dudes to be the most violent guys on the field all the time. Uh, Let's see here. There we go. All right. So a couple notes on drills and drill design. I'm a big believer in big borrow and steal, right? And like I said, we have a luxury here in Sacramento where we're surrounded by just phenomenal football programs, phenomenal coaches. Uh, We have California has the best junior college system in the country. And I'll argue that with anybody any day of the week, right? Uh, I, uh, TJ played at uh, San Mateo JC, It's a great junior college program. I played at American River. Mark played at American River. And we've had this blessing to be able to be involved in junior college football here in in California, which to me is just the best. Um, So as a result, we have all these, uh, we have all this ability to, um, that's right, Jake. I'm an ARC guy, so I know that San Mateo is like, yeah, but hey, go Beavers, brother. (laughs) So anyway, um, so because we have this luxury, I'm able to go and do things like talk to John Osterhout and get and get information, get insight, get drills, go talk to like Lenny Wagner, get information, get drills from SRJC, talk to these great coaches. Next, always be a student right? The great thing about football is it changes, right? Um, I'm a big golf. I, I, I'm a big golfer. I'm a huge ice hockey fan. None of that stuff changes a lot, but football, the cool thing about football is it's always morphing and it's always changing. So as long as you're always a student, I really feel like you can always continue to be successful in what you do. Um, last to that, most of the drills that we use are stuff that I've stolen that I've modified for our needs. Uh, the res- like I said, the resources I have, we have all these great JC coaches. I got great high school coaches I'm surrounded by that I can talk to on a regular basis. And I love talking ball with these guys. Books and videos are, are great. And I know that's kind of a no duh, but I kind of am a believer that if you go to a clinic or you buy a book or you buy a video, if you get that one thing from that video, then that money was worth it, right? And I know some of these videos are expensive. You could spend 40 bucks on a DVD, But to me, that $40 is worth it if I'm going to be able to pull something away, even if it's one tiny like like language piece or one tiny technique piece that's going to make us a better football team. Last, YouTube is a tremendous resource. And I know that's kind of crazy to think about, but like if you're a 425 guy like I am, you could go on there and there's clinics from Gary Patterson right on YouTube and you can watch three or four hours worth of Gary Patterson talking about blitz game from TCU right and they're all over the place so YouTube is a great resource last and I think this is an important thing to emphasize you should be able to have the answers to the why questions why are we doing this drill and have that answer why do we run this have that answer if you don't have the why questions my suggestion would you to you would be if I don't have the answer to that, you probably shouldn't be doing it, right? If I don't know why I'm doing it and I'm just doing it, then you need to look at why that's even in your drill set. So this is going to be this one's got some YouTube clips. I'm not going to click on those because I want to get to our film. Um, but for us. When I'm drilling step, strike, and extend, and I'm drilling run fit, 
It's all about being able to marry my eyes, my hands, and my feet together. If I can marry those three things together, right, through my drill set, I believe that my guys are going to be able to be more successful on a Friday night. So there's a couple things that we do um, in starting to marry the feet and the eyes and the hands together. We do ladder drills. And some of them are basic ladder drills. So for example, if I'm doing a basic ladder drill and I set up the ladder, right? I'm talking to my kids about foot placement, but at the same time, I might, like for us, I'm gonna put the ladder in front of a goalpost and I'm gonna have them do things like club rip, club punch through, uh, spin, and work those things in that drill, right? Um, our run feet mechanics drill, uh, for that, that's going to emphasize things like hip flip. It emphasizes things. And I have that. And if you guys want it, it's got the YouTube clips on this PowerPoint. You can click on it and it'll come up. And it'll emphasize like where our run or our feet supposed to go in the run, emphasize how we flip our hips, emphasize, um, you know, things like that six inch power step, which I'm going to talk about here in a second. And then hip flip on the cans. So what we'll do is we'll get cans together and we're going to work on just flipping the hips. And when I'm talking about flipping the hips, I'm going to um, actually look at my living room. I don't have enough room here to flip my hips in the living room. But um, when I'm flipping the hips, I want to get perpendicular to that offensive lineman. So I'm going to use my hands and my feet in such a way to flip my hips to get them perpendicular so I can get skinny into that hole, right? Those things for us are pre-practice drills. And like Mark will tell you, um, my practice plan is an intricate animal that's down to the minute and the second. And if you're not moving on, you need to figure out a better way to use your 10, 15 minutes, however much I'm giving you to do something, right? Um, the most important component, though, that we drill is that six-inch power step, okay? The thing about the six-inch power step, and I am going to use this one, is this is a drill that we utilize um, every day. And we line, when we do it, we line them up in the shoot. Let's go, let's go. In the, in the, uh, shoot. But, and we're putting that half round down in front of it, in front of those guys. And what we're trying to emphasize is just that get off step, taking six inches, gaining ground, putting that foot back into the ground in a powerful manner. So for us, to me, the six inch power step is the most important key in teaching step strike and extend. Okay, I'm going to go back to my, oh, what happened to my, uh, my deal here. There we go. All right. So from there, um, we go and we go and start teaching the strike and the extend for us. And everybody knows this drill to me, six point progression is the best way to teach strike and extend. Cause now you're marrying your strike, right? With your aiming point. We talk aim small, miss small for us. We want to put our hands our inside hand to the center of the breastplate and our outside hand to that leveraged shoulder, the outside shoulder, right? So for us, six point progression is marrying the hands and now the hips and the eyes and the hands together in order to extend the sled. We do six point progression every single day. I believe in that drill. I think it's the, one of the best drills that you can run to teach strike and extend. Next, we literally do a drill that's called Step Strike Extend. I stole this one from Northwestern, okay? Um, that one, you just get on the sled for Northwestern. I'm going to show the video real quick. For Northwestern, they do it against the body. We do it against... Um, we do it against the sled, okay? Okay. Now, part of the reason why we do it against the sled is because I can get more reps. For me, I want to get as many reps as humanly possible within the time that I'm allotted. Again, because I'm a stickler on time. So we're doing all this stuff that you see here. We're doing it on our three-man sled. And I got a three-man sled instead of a five-man sled because for me, I just think three is easier to work with, with five than five. I like the number three. It's a smaller number. Five is you start to get a lot of people. 
Okay. Last is strike and flip. So what we'll do is strike and flip, and I'm not going to show that. Well, I am going to show it because it'll make a little bit more sense. So strike and flip, we're going to fire out actually into a goal post and work on flipping our hips. Because what that what we're doing now is I'm working on my being able to snatch that offensive lineman away so I can shed him and make a play. I don't know why I have this advertisement. That's awesome. There we go. Okay, so again, so you'll see in this drill, this guy's setting up these bags. And for us, we're, we're doing it just exactly the way this drill is designed, right? As I'm working on striking the bag and then flipping it and then flipping my hips in a manner that's extremely violent. We take our, we take tape, we put it on there. We do the exact same drill that they're doing here. Okay. All right. So the next most important component for us is being able to now marry the eyes, the feet, and the hands all together. So we do a drill that's called mirror step. And all mirror step is for us is we're running blocks at our guys. One on, man to man, one on one blocks. So they'll get zoned, they'll get base, they'll get down, they'll get kick step for pass pro. Now, this is where we start to teach the one handed stab. For us, the one handed stab is just the extra bonus on top of step strike extend. So what is one handed stab? If, I, for example, if I'm in pass rush, if I'm getting my, my visual key going away from me, okay, I'm going to take my hand, my, my inside hand, and I want to stab it as hard as I can into the center breastplate of that offensive lineman. Does a couple things. I'm creating separation. And two, I'm now forcing that offensive lineman to make a move, okay? Um, yes, you can get a copy, totally. So I'm forcing to make that offensive lineman to make a move. So for example, if he's in, if he's kick stepping and his hands are up and I one hand stabbed to the chest, he's got to get my hands off me. So he's going to swipe up, swipe down, swipe to the side. However he does now, once he commits to doing that to get that hand off, now I've set up my pass rush move. The next thing we do, we work on double teams. We work on double teams against the sled. So we'll step strike extend into the sled, and we'll have a guy next to him that's got a bag. And what he's going to do is he's going to come down like he's giving him a double team. And we're practicing on doing two things. We want to spike the knee into the ground and then take my hand and shoot my hand up into the air. When we shoot the hand up in the air, we're breaking down the integrity of the double team. And as we're shooting that hand up into the air now, it, it creates a pile for our linebackers to be able to fold and overlap. The last one, drill that we focus on when we're talking um, blocking scheme is jelly wrong arm. And again, this is part of the one-handed stab and step strike extend. So if my visual key, right, and for us, our visual key is near pec to near shoulder. So if our visual key goes down in a way, I know that I'm going to step strike and extend either the near hand, near shoulder or near hip. I prefer the near shoulder because I can get that guy now off center with the near shoulder and force him up. Now, what that does is, one, it teaches us to shuffle down when we're playing zone read. But as we're doing this, I'm going to shoot my eyes inside. Now I'm looking for any trapper coming at me and I'm going to give Mark some credit because I stole this drill from Mark Seibel. Mark, thank you very much for, for jelly wrong arm. So I'm shooting my hand away. I'm looking inside. If here comes the puller, I want to wrong arm it. So I want to rip, rip past him. I'm not a big correct shoulder guy, because again, our goal is to correct the middle, to protect the middle of the chessboard. Okay. So we want to spill these run plays to our five jackals that are in the back, all of our DBs and then our two linebackers. So for us, if we can get that ball moving laterally towards the sideline, that's better for us. Okay.
And you're not allowing them to do what they want to do is just kick you out. Correct. So when it comes to rushing the passer, like I said, the one-handed stab, again, we're playing run fit on the way to the quarterback. So for us, one-handed stab is part of run fit. Two uh, Step strike extends part of run fit. So for us, when we one-hand stab, we want to violently strike that guy to his center breastplate to make that offensive lineman commit to something, whether it's committing to swiping my hands up, swiping my hands down, moving my hand across, because now it opens our pass rush to be able to go into minimum contact. If for some reason, like they say they're in slide protection, I'm playing the three technique. If my visual key moves across my face, it's now max contact. I don't want you doing minimum contact rush. If that visual key is crossing my face and slide pro, we're going max contact right now. So the drills that we use to teach. Why is that? What's that, Mark? Why is that? Why is what? Like, yeah. So, cause if he's crossing your face and I'm just asking, cause there might be coaches out there asking or why to tell their kids that. Cause if he's crossing your face, what's most likely he doing to where now, instead of minimum it's, contact. It, it, for us, it's we're either getting some type of zone running play or we're getting or we're getting slide protection, right? Part of the reason why we step strike extend when we get slide protection inside is I want to force that quarterback to step up, right? I want to force that quarterback to step up because the majority of high school quarterbacks are not as comfortable as their coaches would like to believe in standing in the pocket, okay? A lot of high school quarterbacks want to get out. They want to get out on the edge. They want to throw. They want the option to run. I want that kid, especially the great athletes, to step up and make a big-time throw in the pocket, right? So that's the biggest reason why we go max contact and step strike extend when I get my visual key crossing my face. Um. So when I'm talking rushing the passer, when I'm talking minimum contact rush, we teach three moves. That's it. And you're only allowed to do number three if you pass the vertical line of the quarterback, which I'll get into when we watch the film here in a second. So I'm teaching rip, hands, swat, rip, punch. I don't like teaching swim. You get these kids that come up here, a good offensive lineman's going to punch right underneath your armpit and you're dead meat. So when I'm teaching, when I'm teaching punch, I'm teaching swat the hand away and I want to punch over the top of the shoulder pad because now I'm, I don't have the blocking space that I would if I was coming up here high on a swim. Okay. We teach that through our club progression. So it's done on the sled. It's two whistles, first whistle club, second whistle rip. Right. And we go it down. Everybody gets eight to 10 reps a piece going down and going back on the sled. Then we do this thing called Wang Chung. I stole this from um, D line coach at American river when I was playing in American river. And what we're doing is we're standing one-on-one -on -one, and this is a pre-practice drill for us where offensive linemen got our hands on and we're just working on swiping the hand away and then ripping, swiping the hand away and then punching. And we're doing it in a repetitive motion. We're trying to get as many reps as we can in about five, 10 minutes. When it comes to spin, I'm not going to, when I teach it, I'm teaching it against the goalpost and I'm teaching it when we're running hoops. And how do I teach it when I run the hoops? So when I'm running hoops and we get off, and we got a kid holding the pad, we're teaching the one-handed stab. Once we get to a point on the whistle, now I'm going to teach him to spin back inside because we have what we call the vertical line of the quarterback. Because I want that quarterback to step up. I don't want a kid spinning like a whirling dervish, right, where – He's got where that quarterback's still in front of him. I'm going to spin, lose my gap integrity, and now he's able to scramble outside. So once we start to pass the quarterback, so let's say they're in a three-step drop or a five-step drop, quarter, once we get to the quarterback and start to pass him, we call that the vertical line, which is where the quarterback has stopped in his drop. Now we're teaching him to spin back inside to keep gap integrity and number two, force him to step back up inside the pocket. And then, like I said, the last thing that we teach is max contact, 
which is step, strike, extend. And the only thing we teach off of that is shuffle snatch. And so what shuffle snatch is, is if I'm in pass pro and I'm in max contact, that guy starts to commit and push me one direction. I'm going to shuffle that direction and then snatch him back away. Other drills we use, we use a screen pursuit drill. I'm not going to get into this stuff, but the screen pursuit drill that we use, uh, basically, like I said, is to, is to teach them retracing steps when they get screened. Um, stick and long stick, we use those drills when we're teaching all of our stunt game. Um, we fit these drills into our weekly drill set, and we break up our weekly drill set into run and pass EDDs. We platoon our linemen as much as possible. We don't platoon our skill guys. And our practice plan, like I said, is an interesting beast, and that's a whole – another talk and it's whole and it's in itself. So what I do want to do is I do want to watch um, some of our film here, but I'm going to exit out and pull up huddle real quick. So to emphasize this stuff, Oh man, did I really just do that? I did. So to emphasize this, to emphasize kind of what I'm teaching here. And so you can see it in real time. Um, Let's see here. There we go. All right. So here, what I want to uh, focus on is our one technique, James Turntine. Um, James is great at step, strike, extend. Um, he does a really good job of getting those guys off of him. So if you're watching, James is circled right there. Uh, I'm going to do this. Perfect. So. When we get off, we want to make sure that our foot and our hands hit the ground at the same time, generating as much power. So I particularly in this clip, I want you to pay attention to both his feet and his hands. So you'll see here, I'm not crazy about James's pad level. I'm going to say that up front. I think he could be lower, right? But what you'll see is James's hands and his feet strike the contact point at the same exact time. Now he's in the extend phase. So he's extended out. He's looking into the backfield. I'm looking to get where that off, where that launch point of that running back is. Now that launch, that launch point's going away from him. So what you'll see, which we emphasize here, is now he's going to do an arm under rip. We fit and finish. Okay. So like I said, everything that we do is going to emphasize those three points, the step, strike, extend in our drill set. So the next drill, so the next bullet here, we're looking at Drew Cook. He played three technique for us. And this is, if I'm going to step strike extend, this is what I want it to look like. Have it up and rendered and stuff in the next probably two days. It'll be on the YouTube channel and Facebook page. And um, anyone who uh, registered will have a link sent to their email as well. So thank you, coaches. Thanks for everyone being here. Thank you. Um, and oh, this Friday, this Friday, we're going to do one on culture winning, um, winning with culture beyond X's and O's. So TJ Matt's going to be on again, which is awesome. Um, we have a guy named Dwayne, Dwayne Sebecki's going to be on. He's a high school scout, uh, scout out of in, uh, Indiana. And he actually did some, uh, Matt sent him some film and he did some yeah, scouting for Matt. Talk about that Mark a little bit. Cause What's I that? really. So, uh, I, guys, I, I would encourage you guys to come on and listen to Dwayne. Yeah, he's right. a, he's a genius. Take over, Matt. Yeah, he's so Dwayne. Um, Dwayne, what Dwayne does is, is instead of just scouting like tendencies, X's and O's, he scouts individual athletes, but he also scouts like sideline demeanor. Um, excuse me. Um, how you how you're making adjustments with your kids. And what he does is he's looking at film that might be like from live TV, games on YouTube, that kind of thing. So what I did is I sent him our game against Christian Brothers and our game against Monterey Trail, and he did a whole write-up. And TJ, if you want, I'll, I'll actually send what he wrote up about our game. Um, it was from our focus, but it was, it was really interesting. And for us, um, what it did for me is it brought up some things that 
you know, I kind of, that, that made me like, wow, I, I, I didn't recognize that. Like, I felt like we were in pretty good condition up front. And when it came to rating our offensive, our defensive line conditioning on a scale from one to five, he only rated us as a three. And I'm kind of like, well, shit, man, I'm going to tell us that. Like, at first, I'm kind of like, damn, what the hell did I do wrong? You know, but then when I looked at it and I was like, wow, you know what? Maybe we do need to sprinkle in some more conditioning in certain areas of our practice plan so we can get more out of our D linemen. Um, and for and just in how we like our, our demeanor on the sideline, like, um, you know, how we handle referees, how we ha how we do, um, how we talk to our kids and what he saw on film. And for me, I felt like it was super helpful, even more so than just the tendencies and the X's and O's, because we all look at tendencies. We all look at X's and O's. We all look at technique. But the one thing that I don't think we spend enough time on is looking at the overall view of our um, of our program and what our program looks like to somebody from the outside. And I, I felt like it was one of the I, I would have paid five hundred dollars for this and he did it for free for me. And it was super helpful. And I felt like made me look at some things differently as a coach than I normally would have. So I, I definitely recommend you guys come in on Friday and listening to him. Very, very, very helpful. Yeah. He's actually going to, um, I saw some of his, uh, he sent me his presentation and I went through it today and he, he, he shows some of the stuff that he broke down for your game and why he did it. And, and um, what he was talking about, like why he gave you a D or, or, or your D line, a three rating, was because after a certain amount of time, certain guys in certain positions, like one of the things I was looking at that he looks at is like, is your nose tackle or your one tech? Are they making a, a are they making any plays after the second quarter? Right. You know, like I like it, I thought that I was before it became analytics and all this kind of stuff. It was known as statistics. And I like I thought that I was pretty good in my stats and breaking breaking game film down because that's what I love is breaking game film down. And I never thought about it from that angle. Never Me. thought about self-scouting. And I know all of us coaches want to do self-scouting, but I think we're so busy scouting the other team that how many times do we have time to do self-scouting, but how important is it too? So. Yep. hundred anyway. percent. And I, I, we, and we self-scout, like I actually assign like my, you know, awesome. guys on my staff that just do self-scout. Hey, I need you to, you know, you're going to look at this. You're going to look at this. You're going to look at this. Right. And, um, but you know, I'm always interested in what somebody who's not playing us, who's just watching us as a team, you know, what is it that you're seeing? You know, what, what's, what, what do you get from watching us just as like, I'm analyzing you, who you are as a team and as a program. And to me, I felt like that was just super helpful. Well, we know the sayings like sometimes when you're too close to it, you, when you're too close to something, you can't see it. 100%. Right. And so, but yeah, he's going to be on it. He's going to actually tie it to um, building a culture of accountability through film. Cause that's another thing us coaches know, right? Like film does not lie. <laughs> you can be like, Oh, I smoked that guy. Coach. Did you see that? And it's like, Oh, we'll see in film. Oh, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a, what? That's what you call that. Yeah. What was that? <laughs> All right. You guys, um, a great job. Thank you, good coaches. Thank you for everybody showing up. Couldn't do it if it wasn't for you guys doing it, being interested, and, and all you coaches, like, man, Matt, TJ, like, Peter, Coach Wojtek, like, a, a great job today. Loved it. Um, so hopefully we see a lot of you guys on uh, Friday. So, all right, you guys take care. Be safe. See you guys.